All right, everyone, now we have to talk to, about today's dumbest uh, post award. It goes to MSNBC. This is becoming a habitual thing for them. I mean, when you have Maddow and Joy Reid, you're going to get a lot of real winners uh, or losers, really. A link in the description archived, of course. <laughs> They're still attacking DeSantis. Now, for his absence over COVID. Now, he has already explained his absence. His absence was due to him attending his cancer-stricken wife's uh, treatments because the hope is his wife doesn't die of cancer. A normal individual, a rational individual, let's say I'm politically motivated. I hate DeSantis. I'm a diehard Democrat. A normal person with a little bit of intelligence would say, okay, now that he's revealed that it involves his wife and cancer, if I attack him, it's probably not productive. Even if I don't, I, don't, I don't have any morals or anything, I just want to knock him off his pedestal and a Democrat be the Florida governor, which I predict will not happen in the next election based partially on actions like this. Even if I still viscerally hate him and I hope his wife dies or something, if I'm a total shit fuck, I'm still, if I'm strategically minded, I'm not dumb enough to attack him over the issue because he is effectively won. That, that piece should be taken off the table. I've already lost. I took the L already. But MSNBC and Joy Reid are dumb. These are stupid people. MSNBC is, is the Neanderthal, the lumbering Neanderthal of even the legacy media. It's arguably the most backdated of them all. Joy Reid is one of their least intelligent pundits on the least intelligent network out of the least intelligent core of media at large. So she thinks it's a good idea. She, she has an activist so-called aboard to say, well, DeSantis was... Uh, reticent to do his job. Obviously, he, he should be kicked out. He didn't actually win by that many votes. Uh, he'll win by a lot more in the next one. It'll be a landslide, by the way. And he thinks he thinks he can just do whatever he wants. Uh, see, here's the problem. Um, you didn't criticize Pete Booty Judge, the transport secretary, for taking paternal leave with his his I don't know husband wife. I don't know which label he uses. Who cares? Uh, when they adopted several children for several months, taking paternity leave, despite being the goddamn transport secretary during what was pegged as an infrastructure crisis. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. You know, uh, uh, you know, Chasen could have raised the two kids. I don't know. I guess they're using formula, although you never know these days. Um, that would be possible. DeSantis' wife could die. I think he wants to spend time with her when she has need of him. I don't see that as negligence at all. The other part is, if he were there, let's say that he, he ignores his cancer wife. He goes out in public and he just, you know, he gives speeches and does his normal gubernatorial thing and she's off in the hospital suffering. Which, by the way, he would get attacked for ten times worse by Joy Reid and MSNBC. Well, <laughs> what a misogynist. He doesn't even care about his wife. It's obviously just a trophy wife for him. Garen fucking T, that would have been Joy Reid's goddamn fucking stupid headline. Let's say he did that. He's not going to do anything else anyway. He's already made it clear there will be no mask mandate. There will be no lockdown. There will be no uh, uh, vax mandate and all this other horse shit that hasn't worked anyway. They're using monoclonal antibody treatments that now they have to purchase themselves because they're not being provided directly from the federal government because Biden wanted to punish Floridians for not voting for him during the election, which, by the way, is literally a true case. Uh, DeSantis is attacking him over and over. And he's winning on the issue, hence his approval polling being uh, stratospherically higher than that of Joe Biden for a reason. By the way, Biden now at a new record low in approval. His, his approval's at its record lowest now, and his disapproval at record highest. It's half a point higher than the previous record. And it's going in a bad direction for him. Supposedly, the congressional ballot is evening out. I highly doubt that that's not due to push polling methodologies. MSNBC is completely stupid to attack him, though. You have lost against DeSantis every single time. The first time, <clears throat> you'll remember, was last year, I think fairly early last year. Warm weather begins, people want to go to the beach, and DeSantis says, oh, go to the beach. I don't give a shit. It's an outdoor area. There's no literature to suggest that you're at particular risk for getting COVID among a bunch of other seemingly healthy people. They're obviously not symptomatic because sick people don't want to go to the fucking beach and get eaten by a shark and get the shark infected and then all the all, all the sharks die. Uh, environmentalists beware. They don't want to go to the beach. They want to sit in bed. <laughs> That's what sick people tend to do. 
people who are playing volleyball and drinking their margarita and going for a swim probably do not have COVID, especially the early wave of COVID, which was much more likely to be symptomatic and more likely to be more significantly symptomatic than what we've got now in the far degraded Omicron, which is much more cold-like. It's like a mild flu, bad cold, as opposed to a bad flu, which was the original COVID strain. Delta somewhere in between really depended on how fat you were more than anything else. They lost on the issue. There was no surge. There was no mass die-off. There was no problem. Then it was monoclonal antibodies earlier this or uh, early last year. DeSantis said, hey, we've got monoclonal antibodies that seem to be therapeutic. We're going to deploy them. And also Regeneron was mentioned. He was considered a conspiracy theorist. He was tarred and feathered for months on this issue. Until the WHO and the CDC came out releasing a presser and saying, yeah, these things work. These are the secondary line for people who are infected and have significant symptoms. Again, he comes out smelling like a rose. Now, more recently, he's absent for a few weeks, supposedly absent, although he very early on uh, 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 had another person that was capable of coming in for voting purposes it was as a proxy. Uh, or maybe I'm thinking of the wrong politician. Never mind about that. Uh, this happens, by the way, in, in Congress as well. He comes out and he clarifies, well, he has his people clarify because he was still there with his wife uh, getting cancer treatments, that he's not absent, his wife is sick, and he's there with her in the hospital because she got cancer. She's getting, you know, chemotherapy or whatever. They're still attacking him. They, they, it's just like MSNBC and especially Joy Reid and some of these others, they refuse to acknowledge the fact that they have lost completely on an issue. They refuse to acknowledge the fact that they should be fucking embarrassed. They don't need to apologize because they never will, but they should be embarrassed. They were wrong. An attempt to attack him was completely thwarted, and he blindsided them. And at the same time, AOC, who supposedly is supposed to be doing, I guess, a job in New York, she's in Florida, maskless and hanging out with her soy boy cuck boyfriend that I'm sure likes to watch more than anything else, uh, with his doofy ass sandals, um, and, and he's grilling her at the same time, and it's just legendary. DeSantis has won everything. I think they're beginning to get more afraid of DeSantis, especially since he's in command of a swing state, or what at least what used to be a swing state. We'll see about it in the upcoming 2024 election if that holds true still. I think they're almost as afraid of him as they are of Trump returning. Trump, I think they're more worried immediately about Truth Social. They're afraid that he's going to use that as a launch pad to denigrate their monopoly on news and so forth, and that it'll get big enough, probably in association with other new tech, um, Rumble and BitChute and so forth, Substack. I think they're terrified that there will be a nexus of new tech, and it'll actually be properly funded and innovative enough to begin denigrating Web 2.0. Uh, but second to that, you know, Trump may not run. He may choose not to. Biden might have a health issue, and then the age question might block Trump from winning in a primary. DeSantis becomes effectively the heir apparent if he chooses to run. And again, he might not either. He might say, well, I've got a made job here in Florida. I'm governor. I get to stay local. It's sunny and warm. I'm not in the D.C. swamp hellhole. Uh, why would I want to be president? He might choose that. He might also say, yeah, maybe I'll wait another term or two because I'm still in my 40s. Rand Paul could be heir apparent. At this point, though, I think a dented tin can could probably win against whoever the Democrats choose as their nominee. And there are rumblings that the left may sideline the neoliberals and actually be able to effectively get like a Sanders-style candidate in to primary Biden out. And if that happens, by the way, they lose. They probably lose all 50 states if they nominate a socialist. Uh, they'll get pounded. They, they, they don't seem to understand reality. They're not very good at strategy, except for the quasi-revolutionary strategy, so-called, of underwhelming local precincts where an incumbent hasn't run in 10 years. So yeah, MSNBC is absolutely stupid to do this. They're going to end up taking the L again. You know, DeSantis probably will respond just so that we're aware. That's about all. Peace out.